With another episode of the sentence. In the last episode, we talked about aphrotheria, the second group of the sentence. So in this one, we will be talking about the third group, that is Loristheria, the mammals that originated in Laurasia, which also includes well-known mammals like dogs, cats, and bears. And if you haven't watched the first and second parts already, links will be down below in the descriptions and also at the end screen cards. So without any further ado, let's get started. Carnivora contains many well-known carnivorous mammals. They are divided into seven groups: Canidae, which includes dogs, Ursidae or bears. Mustelidum, which includes mustelids, Pinnipedia, which includes seals, the African palm civet, Philodia, which includes cats and insects, and lastly, Viverodia, which includes hyenas, mongooses, and wyverns. This order is the fifth largest order in mammals. They have carnassial teeth with sharp incisors and canines that are thick and stress resistant. So let's talk about their evolution. This order first evolved in North America from insectivores around 60 million years ago, just after the extinction of dinosaurs. This is a great example of how mammals became dominant after the extinction of the dinosaurs. The major groups of this order diverged from each other in the Eocene and Oligocene epoch. Terrestrial carnivores have soft pads which they require to ambush prey. In seals, the limbs have been modified into flippers for swimming, unlike in Cartesians and Serenians, which have modified tails. Canids are the most popular carnivores, which include your pet dog. They also hunt in packs. Muscles are classified by their skull and teeth. Philodia, which includes cats, have retractile claws used for gripping when attacking prey. And lastly, the Virodia includes mongooses and hyenas. Pangolins are also known as Manidae. They are divided into three genera Asiatic pangolins, African tree pangolins, and lastly, African ground pangolins. They are the only surviving family in the order Philodota, which is closely related to Carnivora. Unfortunately, the remaining families went extinct. They live in the sub Saharan Africa, the Indian subcontinent, China, and the Southeast Asia. They have scales on which are used for protection against predators when it curls into a ball. These scales are made up of keratin. They are also bulletproof. However, these scales are also a liability as many people post them as they believe that the scales have health benefits, but that's a superstition made by the Chinese religious folks. Literally, if you believe that, they need your toenails. They have a diet of insects, especially ants and termites. They secrete sticky saliva so that insects could stick to the tongue. Due to this tongue, they lack teeth so that they can ingest stones to grind insects. They also have a sturdy skeleton structure and powerful front claws to tear termite mouths. Now, let's talk about the two groups of ungulates, starting with the most diverse of the two, which is Artiodactyls. Artiodactyla is the most common and diverse group of ungulates. They are also known as even toed ungulates. They are classified into five groups, Pilopoda or camels, Suina, which includes pigs and boars, Hypomorphia, which contains of whales and hippos, Traquilidae or mouse deers, and lastly, Picora, which includes giraffes, pronghorns, deers, cattle, goats, antelopes, etc. They bear their weight equally on two out of five digits. The remaining digits are useless. 
They are also quadrupeds, meaning that they walk on four limbs. Majority of this order are herbivores, but pigs are generally omnivores, while Cretaceans are usually carnivores. They evolved in the early Eocene epoch, around 54 million years ago, in Eurasia. They used to be small herbivore mammals that usually ate leaves. However, they further evolved when grass appeared in the Miocene epoch, which resulted in pecorians developing very, very, very complex stomachs with many, many, many tails. They formed a symbiotic relationship with gut bacteria, which breakdowns the cellulose and grass into nutrients and also helps provide energy to the pecorian by its metabolism. Getting back to the evolution of Artrodactyls, Cretaceans evolved in the Indian subcontinent around 50 million years ago. The Mongols, when their ancestors, Ambulocetus, started hunting prey underwater and on land like crocodiles and eventually lost their limbs. Artrodactyls arrived in South America in the Pliocene through the Isthmus of Panama. These animals have eyes in their side so that they can see predators coming from the behind and also have a good sense of hearing and smell like a lot of animals. Perissodactyla is the other group of ungulates that we'll talk about. They are divided into three groups. Equidae, which includes zebras, horses and donkeys, tappers and rhinoceroses. They bear their weight on the third or the first digit, that's why they are known as odd toed ungulates. Just like artidactyls, the remaining deserts are useless. Instead of having multi chambered stomach, they digest plant cellulose in their intestines. They originated in East Asia during the Paleocene epoch and reached India through a rafting event in South America during the Great American Exchange. Equids are by far the most popular odd-toed ungulates, which includes the zebra and the domesticated horse. They have a single digit which is used to make the horse quick. Rhinoceros have a horn which is made out of keratin. This is used for defense. However, rhinoceros are being opposed for these horns. Tapirs have prehensile nose which is flexible and is used for smell and grabbing objects kind of like an elephant drum. Chiroptera are also known as bats. They are divided into three groups, Megabats, Rhinolophidae which includes horseshoe and false vampire bats. It is the second most diverse group of mammals after rodents with them constituting about 20% of mammals. They are only mammals with the ability to fly. Wait a minute, we talked about possum which can drive in marsupial one. Then can we consider possum by flying? No, actually flying and gliding are different. Gliding is a form of jumping. Bats wings are developed to fly with a thin membrane of skin between their digits which helps move the wing. Their main flying muscles are similar to that of humans. There is thumb extending from the wings which helps in climbing trees. It also helps in takeoff for bats. Majority of bats eat insects, but some species consume fruits and nectar, while vampire bats consume blood from sheep, pigs and even humans. Just to give you guys nightmares, let's talk about how they drink blood. They have very very sharp fangs to bite the animal, then they lick the flowing blood with their tongues. Another cool thing about bats is that they have the sense of echolocation in which the bat emits the sound waves and hears the echo of the objects in their pathway of the way. This is similar to that of the sonar used in ships. This sense is used for navigation, identifying objects and hunting insects. However, this ability is not found in megabats. Why? It is a very useful ability. See, where microbats are nocturnal and eat insects, 
Megamats are diurnal and eat nectar and fruits. Lastly, bats have amazing disease resistance, meaning that their immune system is very strong, resulting in them having no symptoms of disease that are very deadly for us, like rabies, Ebola, and of course, COVID-19. Ulipotai flower divided into four groups, Erinaceidae, which includes hedgehogs and moon rats, true shrews, moles, and lastly, solandrons. They are a very diverse order with about 450 species. They are insectivorous. This is the main group that eats insects. They have good hearing, touch, and smell, but poor eyesight because they don't really require eyesight in hunting insects. They are basically less features that unite this group. So let's talk about the various groups of Gilipotite flower. Arinacidae, which includes the cute hedgehog and the moon rats, has spines in their body, which is made out of, once again, keratin, is used for defense when they roll in a ball to protect themselves and also when they hibernate in a torpor state. True shrews are found worldwide except in Oceania. They have a high metabolic rate, that's why they consume a lot of food. They have the ability of echolocation, like bats, resulting in them having terrible eyesight. Speaking of eyesight, moles are literally blind or have small eyes, so they rely on whiskers on their face or feet. It is used for sensing objects and basically another version of touch. Solendons are venomous creatures in the Caribbean. They inject their venom through their lower incisors. This venom is strong enough to cause paralysis in humans. I guess this is about it for Loristheria. Tune in for your conjugularis, the last group of placentals which even contains humans.